Hi, this is a video about rational expressions. First off, a rational expression is literally a fraction where the top and the bottom are polynomials or just numbers. One important thing to note is that if you have a minus sign applied to the numerator or a minus sign applied to the entire denominator, that minus sign could very well just be brought out front of the fraction. Next, the domain is all x values or variable values which the expressions define. Since rational expressions are, factor, are fractions, we have to exclude any values which cause the denominator to equal zero. So find the domain of each of the following. For part a, since x minus three is what's in the denominator, we have to exclude wherever x minus three is equal to zero. So we have to exclude x equals 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So your domain would have to be all real numbers x such that x cannot equal 3. Part b, we have to exclude wherever 5x is equal to 0. Since you're timesing by 5, you divide both sides by 5, and you get 0. So your domain would have to be, in set builder notation, all real numbers x, such that x cannot equal 0. In part C, we'll have a little bit of work to do here, because as you can see, when we set x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0, it's a quadratic equation. So this one, we can factor it, so that's what we'll do. So in this situation, how to solve a quadratic equation set equal to 0 that's factored is we have to set x minus 2 equal to 0 or x minus 1 equal to 0, only then where the product of the two be 0, if one or both of those are 0. <clears throat> so it looks like the two numbers that have to be excluded from the domain would have to be 2 and 1. So the domain will be all real numbers x, such that x cannot equal 1 or 2. So that's how to find the domain. How to simplify rational expressions is that you want to make sure you factor, 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 factor as much as possible. Then you will cancel out common factors. <clears throat> Let's start off an example to part A with 15 over 20, a basic regular fraction. Notice the top and bottom are both divisible by 5. So dividing the top and bottom both by 5 leaves me with 3 fourths. That's one way to get the answer. Or another way to get the answer is to use the factoring approach that we're about to really use a whole bunch. So 15 over 20. 15 can be broken up into 3 times 5, and 20, 20 can be broken up into 4 times 5. Each have a common factor of 5 that can be canceled out. This leaves you a 3 fourths as your answer. Same answer, different strategy. In part B, you can rewrite addition in any order you want. So 2x plus 1 can be written as 1 plus 2x. This is also what's in the bottom. So anything divided by itself will always give you 1. In part C, we will do some factoring. 5x minus 5 has a GCF of 5, leaving you with x minus 1. x cubed minus x squared on the bottom. You can factor out x squared, leaving you with x minus 1. x minus 1 on the top cancels out with x minus 1 on the bottom. That's 5 over x squared as your answer. <coughs> Let's do a few more. <coughs> In part E, we'll factor the numerator to get x plus 2 times x plus 2. You'll definitely be at an advantage if you have practiced your factoring skills and are pretty good with them.
On the bottom, I can pull out a greatest common factor of x. <clears throat> one factor of x plus 2 on top cancels out one factor of x plus 2 on the bottom. You're left with x plus 2 over x. All right, part E. The top and bottom look the same, except on the top, x is positive. On the bottom, x is negative. On the top, 7 is negative. On the bottom, 7 is positive. The signs are flipped. <laughs> One strategy I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative sign out of the bottom, which causes me to have negative 7 plus x in parentheses. You can rewrite the negative 7 plus x. You can reorder them into x minus 7. Only then will you then see that x minus 7 on top cancels with x minus 7 on the bottom, leaving you with just a negative. A negative 1 is what that is. That's simplifying rational expressions. <clears throat> we'll be doing a lot of that same process as we jump into multiplying rational expressions. We'll still completely factor the fractions that we see. We'll, quote, multiply the numerators and denominators together, and then we'll simplify. <laughs> so in part A, recall how to multiply fractions together. You multiply the tops together. You multiply the bottoms together. So on top, I have 3 times 10. On the bottom, I have 5 times 11, 30 over 55. Divide top and bottom both by 5 to give you 6 over 11. One other method that you might have learned would be instead of waiting till the end to simplify, which is after you multiply the tops and bottoms together, you could actually cross simplify, cancel out diagonally. So 10 and 5 are both divisible by 5. So divide 10 by 5 to get 2. Divide 5 by 5 to get 1. You have 3 times 2 on top. 1 times 11 on the bottom, and look, you still get 6 over 11. <clears throat> All right, part B. <clears throat> I'm going to write x plus 7 squared as x plus 7 times x plus 7 so we can see it a little better. The denominator cannot be factored in the first fraction. It's left as x minus 7. All right, in the second fraction, x is on top. And on the bottom, x squared plus 7x, we can factor out x, leaving us with x plus 7. Diagonally, I can cancel out a factor of x plus 7 from the top of the first fraction with the factor of x plus 7 on the bottom of the second fraction. Furthermore, in the second fraction, I can cancel out x on top with the x on the bottom, leaving me with x plus 7 over x minus 7. So take note that we can cancel out vertically or we can cancel out diagonally. Both are completely fine. So we'll continue this more a little bit later, but for now, thanks for watching.